Right, hello and welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me on the banks of the River Severn and we're back out in search of barbel. Before we get into this week's vlog, I just want to say thank you to everybody that's been leaving the channel. Such nice support, all the comments, the sharing of the videos and just enjoying the content that's on the channel. I really do appreciate everybody that leaves the nice comments. So thank you very much. If you are new around here, my name's Danny and every Friday at 6pm we put a new fishing video on the channel. So if you do enjoy your fishing and want a bit of a fix before the weekend, hit that subscribe button down below and then come and join us on a Friday at 6pm for some fishing. So back to today's session, it's about 5 o'clock in the morning and you do join me in the same swim that we ended the first barbell session of the season on in the link above. On that session, I forgot to bring the float rod with me, but I haven't made that mistake today. So if any of you have noticed at the start of the video, I've got a bit of a smile on my face. to say it's five o'clock in the morning and we have had the first barbell of the session on the float. So I'll play that footage now, about 15 minutes ago, you do join me in the swim behind me when we make contact with Mr. Barbell. So in the dull dawn morning, just trotting, a piece of meat on the cordon glide can barely see me float the camera obviously picking up the light and we've hooked into the first barbel so as you can see the river's got plenty of pace just been feeding that hempen meat upstream and you can see a fish just rolled there and the float is buried just a bit down and yeah it's not something I do very often but hopefully we can get him out. And he doesn't look the biggest barbel in the world, but what power. He's just literally holding in the flow there. And it's head up twice. And he goes again. Great fall on the float rod. I mean, super made up to get one, you know, hooked so early on but yeah he isn't the biggest barbel in the world but they're just made for this flow aren't they and yeah hopefully hopefully we can get him in so there we go and like i always say most important thing give him a good rest you know buzzing with adrenaline super excited to get back out there you know and get another one hopefully but let's make sure this guy's okay first Probably taking about 15 minutes, 20 minutes of trotting, and what a battle. Mega made up to get the first barbel on the float since that big one last year on the day. But yeah, hopefully we can get one or two more today. We'll get this beautiful barbel rested and straight back. And like I said last week, when he's ready to go, he'll let you know. And off he goes. What a buzz that was, proper made up to get a barbel so early on, on the float, and what a battle. If we do get a slightly bigger one, it's going to be enjoyable. What we'll do now is we'll take a look at the swim, the tackle that we're using, how we're going to approach it, and hopefully we can get another barbel on the bank. So the setup that we're using today is my 12 to 14 foot Corum Glide. I've got it set at 14 foot today, and I've teamed it up with a snapper reel, and that is loaded with eight pound Dave Harrell line. Got that down to a six gram Corum Avon float. Nice big thick tip, heavy float to control the flow and a thick stem. Hopefully to give it some stability in the water. We are in a pacey swim today. That is down to a six gram Olivet. I've got one of the large quick change swivels from Corum that I knew this year. I've got a hook link of six pound mono and that's all the way down to a size 10 hook so you can see on screen now all the components that i've put together to make the rig and put it together that's the setup that we're using and hopefully we can get one or two more barbell on the bank so taking a look at the bait for the float what i've got there is quite a bit of the hinders hemp and i've cut up two tins of luncheon meat into small cubes and that's the bait that we're going to be using on the float today and with that setup that you've just seen so yeah nice heavy baits that are going to get down in the water and on the bottom 
where Mr. Barbel feeds. So taking a look at the swim, you can see it's very pacey here. Lots of oxygenated water pushing through here. You've got a slack on the far bank where we might put the feeder later on, but I'm going to try my hardest to stay on the float. You can see the flow really does converge here. And I don't know whether we picked it up on the camera before when I was playing that fish, but a barbel did roll there as well. So they will come right up to swim. Hemp and meat have just been feeding up there. So it comes down, it's really shallow, and then it deepens up. And I'm hoping to get the barbel anywhere from putting it in here, holding back, all the way down. So feeding wise, just putting the hemp and the meat upstream so it goes down in a line and straight down the middle of the river where it drops off like that and flicking in and just holding back so that meat's going down in front of the float but it's going along the bottom and so you do drag under a lot because obviously you're going along the bottom of the river. So just hooked into the second one and it's come right up the swim in this fast water just holding back really hard and yeah, a lovely bend in the rod. But yeah it feels good be stood in the river and fishing for barbel on the float it's something that I've been meaning to do for a long time and never really got round to it and it definitely got some power so just moving down to this bit here just to try and get him in to the open water a bit and so that's why my landing nets here because it's this slack water here I'm hoping to land him in So he did put up one hell of a fight, looks like a slightly better one, and yeah, plenty of life in him, we're just going to give him a good rest. On the channel, I've most definitely caught bigger barbel, but what fun, catching them on the float, the battle, yeah, amazing, so glad I've come out today, fishing for these barbel on the float, what a lovely example of a barbel, we won't keep him out too long, we're going to get him back in the edge to rest. And get him straight back and i know i keep saying it on the blog but there are people who watch these videos who are brand new to barbel fishing and yeah they're not a species you can just put straight back you've got to give them time to recover it might take 10 minutes it might take 15 just give them that time and we'll stand there admiring him spending these few moments just looking at them lovely colors the reds, the oranges, the browns, yeah, a beautiful fish. So that's the piece of meat, how I'm fishing it, only a small piece, and the piece of plastic goes through, the hair goes through the plastic, and then you put that on the end of your hair, just keeps the piece of meat on, only a small piece, and the size 10 hook, but that is how I'm attaching the meat. It took about 15 minutes of keeping on feeding and that float's just buried again. A lovely bend in the rod. You see the sun just coming up and what a beautiful way to spend the morning catching barbel on the float. Again, just moving down to this slack and he's not the biggest barbel in the world. He might well be the smallest. But he's barbel number three and what fun on the float. Beautiful little barbel. And I say he's not the biggest. But we'll give him a good rest like all the others. Barbel number three, let's say he's not the biggest, we won't bother holding him up. We'll just do a quick blog of him <laughs> and get him straight back. Barbel number three, ready to go back. Thank you very much. So the glide is a rod that I do get a lot of questions about, you know, the action of it and stuff like that. So you can see there, lovely bend in it. And it is a rod that 
you know, I've caught nets a day on and roach on the river ribble, but it is actually made for barbel. And it feels good today to be out putting it through its paces. You see there the guys who ask the questions, you can see there they're bending it. And you see that float there just holding station in the flow and that barbel just plodding away. What we'll do is we'll just take a time, try and tire him out, and then we'll move down to that slack to try and net him. I decided to get this little guy out for the camera. What a beautiful little barbel. Barbel number four. It doesn't matter how big they are when the barbel, especially in this flow. And um, when you're learning like I am today, you know, fishing the float for barbel, most definitely learning today. I've shown you the tactics that I've used and how I've done it, but I'm most definitely still learning. And when you're learning, getting bites is what it's all about. So as an idea of how much I've fed, that is how much bait I've got left in my tub. So that was one and a half small tins of luncheon meat and a few handfuls of hemp at the start. So I've been putting it in little and often for barbel. Just going to top it up now. So with regards to prepping the meat, that's just one of the tins of luncheon meat. And always bring a bag and take all your rubbish home. And you see there, there's a different tin in there that I've picked up this morning. Then cutting it into lots of tiny little cubes what maybe eight mil and all them just going in the bucket like that then literally just putting in a couple of handfuls of the hemp and mixing it all together you see there how much that hemp seed just bulks it out and it's going to be that hemp seed in the swim that's going to keep the barbel there, keep them rooting around and hopefully long enough for us to get another on the hook but yeah, that's another batch of bait ready to go there we go that's how close the barbel are. See the reel balanced, so when the fish wants to go, it can go. Just keeping that rod super low. And there you go, you see I just gain a little bit, and he goes again. It's very hard to tell, but this one is holding deep and does feel a bit stronger, but then you'll get it in and it'll be about a pound but it's just holding mid river at the moment absolutely gutted the hook's just pulled and the lines come back at me oh yeah he did feel a decent one but always the way but yeah he was in the middle of the river it wasn't like um he wasn't under control and the hook's just pulled so yeah let's get back out there and see if we can get another so feeding the swim for another 10 Minutes have gone back down and there's definitely one or two holding. This one doesn't feel as big as the last one. <laughs> but that's always the way, isn't it? And that, as they say, is fishing. These ones most definitely are the future of the river. And yeah... <laughs> It was a decent one that we did lose and it's always the way you get the other one in. So while I was having a bit of a break and just tying a new hook link, put the feeder rod out on a piece of meat <laughs> and it's just hooped over within a couple of minutes with a barbel. So <laughs> yeah, there's one or two about in the swim today most definitely. So it's turning into a bit of a red letter session. Barbel number six, just put the feeder out on the rig you can see on screen now. Nice simple running ledger on that bolt and run kit and a piece of meat. And it didn't take too long for it to go again. Just setting up another hook link and having a bit of a break. And yeah, having a really good day bank side. So we've had quite a bit of bright sunshine for the last probably two hours and it's gone really quiet. 
but just persevering with it. Been swapping to the feeder, but not really had anything. And then just back onto the float rod, and it's just buried with almost certainly a barbel. Keep that pressure on, just hold, and hopefully you can just tease it away from them snags. You didn't really see during that fight, but we had rain and wind, sun is back out again, and that might be the nicest one of the day, certainly maybe the biggest, and good fight on that float rod. i say it's been a hard maybe two hours plugging away with the feeder and the float rod with the sun out, but it's good to get another one on the float. That other barbel is resting in the net and I thought I'd have another trot and the float is buried again and it's mad how they come in little spurts. You know, is it related to the cloud cover coming over? Definitely think so, it has a part to play. But they definitely move into the swim in fits and starts. They're not there all the time. I'm just going to take my time, enjoy it. And we'll definitely be back down here doing this again. Because it is so addictive. The reel ticking over and that bend in the rod. So what a way to end the vlog. We come out for one barbel and we're ending with a double take. The bottom one was resting, ready to go. Decided to have a few more trots because we're coming to the end of the session. And the top one, just rounding the session off nicely. And regulars to the channel know what this means. It means one thing, Danny's in trouble. Fingers crossed we can get it out, take a look at it, get the car loaded and get home. So this really is the last barble of the session. Again, Danny's in trouble. One wishes all tight lines, and I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.